to Roth or not to Roth? Hey everyone, it's Alvin Parr here with Strategic Choices, another financial tip for you all here. So one of the questions I get from clients and I hear out there is, do I get a Roth IRA or an IRA? And that's a huge question and there's a lot of confusion on that. What really upsets me is that there are some financial advisors that mm, take advantage of this confusion and they make Roth IRAs sound like the best thing since sliced bread. I'd like a sandwich, but I don't feel like eating two whole loaves of bread. Top Now, don't get me wrong, Roth IRAs are great, but are they better than an IRA? Well, let's do the math and you'll see that they can be very similar. In fact, I think it all depends on you. If you have some financial advisor out there that's trying to tell you that the Roth IRA is the best thing since sliced bread, but it hasn't really done an assessment on your particular needs, then I would run away, run to the hills, and go look for another advisor. So let's, let's take a look at why there isn't one that's better than the other. They're very similar, but it all depends again on what's best for you and your family and your scenario. So let's do the numbers. Hey, so before we begin and talk about the what the difference is between the Roth IRAs and the IRAs mathematically, I want to talk about what is the actual differences between a Roth when it comes to the IRS tax code and an IRA. So I, I made this little chart. How is a Roth IRA funded is what's really the key difference between the two. So Roth IRA and IRA. Generally it's funded by post-tax money. And what do I mean by post-tax money? It's money that came into your checking account. So the taxes are already taken out, employee taxes, you name it, that, that's taken out. So whatever comes into your checking account and you write a check to that, it's post-tax. So when you buy stuff at the store, that's post-tax. So this is how you fund it. And because it's post-tax, it, it also tax deferred, so you don't pay taxes on it until you're ready to take it out. And you actually pay no taxes when you withdraw it, or rather some people call it as a tax-free vehicle. So what I mean by that is you put in $1,000 and it grows to 10,000, you don't pay taxes on that $9,000 gain. So no taxes. Does that make a little sense? On the flip side, IRA is, po is funded by pre-tax. It's usually a 401k plan, a pension plan, a 403b for teachers, a 457 for city employees and government employees. So it's normally taken out of your paycheck before you're taxed. So when it's taken out of your paycheck, pre-tax you are tax deferred but here's the difference you don't pay any taxes or actually I'm sorry you are gonna pay taxes on both principal and interest so if you start off again with a thousand dollars and it grows to ten thousand dollars you will pay ordinary taxes on ten thousand dollars and let's assume it's a 20% tax bracket you pay two thousand and you keep eight thousand dollars so that you will end up with eight thousand because now the government is going to take away twenty percent when you're ready to retire now here's the thing if you take out uh, money before you're 59 and a half which some of you have done because you changed jobs and you cash out your 401k don't do that because what ends up happening is you're going to take out another ten percent and you're going to give that free to the IRS that's free penalty, pre-59 and a half penalty um, situation. Now the Roth IRA, you actually have some access to some of your money before you're 59 and a half, but ideally the interest that you gain, that you cannot touch that into your 59 and a half. So here's what some advisors do. They say, hey, go get a Roth IRA because here you pay no taxes, you get to keep $10,000, whereas over here, you just take it, keep it $8,000. So over here, you can make an extra $2,000. That sounds appealing, right? Unfortunately, that math is wrong, and I'm gonna show you why it's wrong. But any advisor that tries to tell you that 
A Roth IRA is going to pay you more than an IRA. They're being very disingenuous, and I'll show you why. Let's take a look. Let me clean up the board, and we'll get right back. So now we're ready to do the math on the Roth versus the IRA and how they actually grow differently. So like I mentioned, there's going to be advisors out there that are going to try to trick you into saying that the Roth is better than the IRA. No, that's not the case. Again, it's suitable based on what you need. So I'm going to do the math first, and then I'm going to tell you how, why a Roth may be better for you or not. So let's do the math first and to dis debunk what some advisors are saying out there. So like I showed previously, $1,000 versus $1,000 and you pay no taxes when it grows to 10,000 and this one you pay taxes when it grows to 10,000 is not a good apples to apples comparison. So let's show that now. So first and foremost, here's where you, people will get confused. They think that the, the Roth IRA has a better interest rate rate of return than the IRA, not true. Whatever you invest the Roth IRA, if it's the same investment as, as the IRA, it's gonna grow at the same rate. So let's assume it's growing at 7% per year, or 7.2% per year, because that means with the, the rule of 72, every 10 years your money is going to double, okay? So again, the rate of return, assuming they're in the same underlining investment portfolio, whether it's a CD at a bank, a checking account, a mutual fund, it's the same one, it's going to grow at the same rate, okay? So you want to make sure that don't don't fall into that trick when they try to trick you. So it's the same investment, same rate of return. The rule of 72 at 7.2% says that if you had invested $10,000 here, it's going to it's going to double to 20,000 in 10 years. Okay, so that's that. So we're just stick with this kind of a rule. However, so given that rule of 72, if we had started off right here with $10,000, investment in 10 years it will double to twenty thousand dollars okay that's given 10 years okay so now let, let's say you're ready to retire in 10 years from now and you're, you're gonna pay taxes on that twenty thousand dollars and let's assume you're at a 20 percent tax bracket here's the part the tax bracket everybody doesn't no one really knows what their tax bracket is how would you know it's based on how much you're earning right now. Your tax person knows what your tax bracket is. Some people could be at 10%, some people at 20. Very wealthy folks are probably at the 30, 38% tax bracket. So this number we really don't know. It's gonna be based on, again, how much you're earning total. That will determine your bracket. But assuming both people are earning the same amount, it's a 20% tax bracket here. So that means here, you're taking $16,000 home. That's your take home, okay? So if I, if the advisor that, that I was telling you about that's out there trying to trick you, and he, he does an apples to apples comparison of $10,000, of course that grows to $20,000, you pay zero in taxes, and you've earned $20,000. That sounds cool, right? That's not true. Because what he, is, he or she is failing to tell you is that you need, remember this is post-tax, so this is pre-tax, this number has to be post-tax. So if you're paying 20% in taxes right now, your actual investment availability is actually closer to 8,000. So you, you pre-deduct the 20%. That's gonna be your true apples to apples comparison here. So assuming the rule of 72, 8,000 now doubles, equals 16,000. You pay zero in taxes. This is 16,000 is now your take home. You notice something? This is the same amount over here. So a Roth IRA and an IRA, if you do the math and your, your tax bracket remains the same, then the numbers are going to be the same. So if you do the math again, there's really very little difference between the two. So why would you get a Roth IRA versus an IRA? Well, first off, I think the IRA is probably gonna be the best thing to get started with. For those of you that are working, if your company offers a 401k, it's pre-tax already, so you want to start saving. However, if you do not need a tax deduction and you already have other vehicles and so forth, or you're not benefiting from the tax deduction and your tax person can tell you that, then it might make sense getting a Roth IRA. A Roth IRA has to be funded by you from your checking account, so you actually have to work at it a little bit more. Whereas here, if, you're if you have the benefit of having a 401k from your company, they'll do all the work for you. You just decide how much from your paycheck to take out. 
So again, I really am a big fan of IRAs because one, you can get the tax deduction, and two, you know, the numbers at the end of the day are going to be very similar. So am I saying a Roth IRA is bad? Nope, it's not bad at all. But you want to do apples apples comparison and make sure you don't need the tax deduction today. I hope that helps. I just wanted again you understand how a Roth IRA versus an IRA works. And, and also understand that the numbers don't lie. They basically show that there's really no major number difference between the two, assuming the underlying investment is the same, assuming that you're gonna be at the same tax bracket. And in some cases, when you retire, you're gonna be at a lower tax bracket. So you actually can make a little bit more money on a pre-tax vehicle. Hopefully this tip for, for myself was helpful for you. If you have any questions, if you like this video, if you want to subscribe to my channel, please do. If you think this information will be helpful, please forward it to your friends and family and reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you and bye-bye.